The Pokot people are pastoralists by tradition, but climate change is threatening this way of life and the community's very existence. They are now slaves in their own land. Conflicts over resources between the Trukana and Pokot make this a dreaded region and few venture here. Insecurity aside, the non-existent roads also make this a no-go region. Our mission was to get to Kulal Valley, one of the regions worst hit by the drought. So you've covered like uh, what distance? We've covered about uh, f mm, 65 kilometers. 65 kilometers. And we are yet to cover another 36 kilometers. 36 kilometers again to, to cover and it's 12.46. We're just going to... Which area are we going to? Kulal. We're going to Kulal. The journey to Kulal is unpredictable. Yes, sir. Bumpy and rough and good preparation is key. A few minutes into the journey, we come across this bulldozer. It broke down 10 years ago, and it's a reminder of the harsh and rough terrain of our Kuret division where Kulal Valley is located. This expansive area with a total population of just over 4,000 people lacks the very basic facilities. There is no school nor health facility within reach. This is the division where 23 police officers were massacred by armed Pokot bandits in 2014 at Kasarani Valley. Kulal, one of the valleys in the Suguta corridor, is experiencing devastating effects of the drought. Kolmoy Kapelion was a rich man before cattle rustlers deprived him of a large percentage of his herd. Drought is now claiming those that survived the last last raids. With one of his camels having succumbed, Kolmoy now fears for the worst. It is known as the valley of death due to armed conflict between the Pokot and Trukana. But the current death being witnessed here is because of the ravaging drought. We traverse the valley with Kolmoy and his friend. Local Nyang Lorus, both Kenya police reservists, providing protection. You say that you have a man in your money. Pass, man in your guns and a man in your. Kitu ya samani mendele. A week before we arrived here, bandits had attacked a village bordering the valley and made away with hundreds of livestock. Tension is the norm here, and the same applies for the neighboring villages. Less than 50 kilometers away is Lomelo in Trukana East. On the 12th of this month, three people, including a Kenya police reservist, were killed at Lomelo by suspected Pokot bandits. The bandits made away with an unknown number of animals towards the Suguta Valley. The state of affairs leaves the people of Kulal battling the ravages of drought while also living in constant fear of a possible retaliatory attack. The big problem now is hunger and insecurity. That place now is it's not good at all to, for you now by the, by, by the time now. Mm. This time now it's not good. It's like a buffer zone between Turkana and Pokot. Evidence that this is indeed the value of death dots every corner littered around the valley are remains of what was once livestock, the ones that could not make it 
as the drought bites on. As we continued with our excursion of the valley, bad news reached Kolmoy Kapelion. Yet another of his cows had died. The cow died as it went uphill after drinking water. They say hundreds of livestock have died in a similar manner. Ngine salasin, ngine arupaine. Busi, busi, mingi. Wati ya kengata ra 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 wani apa tamano? Kemak keminya wul lagi tak keminya wul lagi tak kemiku yang kena kita kiamo. Orang tua tak layak tela kaki aku kebar semua kurang nak kata masanya. Kewanya nyu tamasai, umpo ulo aku kurang nak ngeri tak tamasai. Nyombo lagi ada nanti nyelak kong, nyelak kong kesaurian itu memi ni kena ngeri jangan tamasai. Kewanya nyata masa ada lagi, tapi kewanya itu rungut ini je. Agak tamas ke mata ngomong. Kalau kita, ko mian oleh kuan. Kupel ini ada sakit jangan makan orang ni apa tu mereka yang raga. Kita ni tu ke ada, yang raga ni nyai, nyai. Jadi ni, ke kerja ni mungkin orang dia ni nak ikut awak sih dengan ror. Tadi tamasai, gua nyubi, gua dia nyubi ni mana lagi tu? Lebih tu anda kaki je tu, pakai mohon gua mewul, mohon dia jaga mewul. Lejen, lejen tu je. Demi je, demi ni cuma ya. Khusyuk ni ni. Ipe leh ni jamah sana mi ya. I, i, i tenan ni. Kua mata, kua mata. Masih aja. Kalau gaji ramu. For the past 40 years, green gas emissions have raised global temperatures by over one degree Celsius. Weather patterns have changed drastically as a result. Rainfall has declined and increasingly becoming unpredictable and droughts are coming more frequently and rivers are drying up. East Pokot is right at the center of these changes. In my few years here in Pokot I would say the situation at the moment is as bad as I have seen it. It's as bad as I've seen it. Uh, it's very poor. So I think we're in the midst of a, of a very serious drought. <laughs> I believe that the predictions are not very good for the coming year. I believe they're not very good. So I'd be worried. I'd be worried. Thousands are facing water shortages. Ita kuisha chumapili ili ya ili ya wiki yangu ni ni na wana tu kama pili ni na pima kuamaj chumapili yangu ni ili kuapa sasa i akiapika chumapili ita pika chumapili ita kuwa ingombe ili ingombe pali iko kesho ili chumapili yangu ni. We arrived at Chemaes Primary School in Turioko Ward in Tiati, Baringo County, at around 10 in the morning. <laughs> it was break time. We joined the peoples in the field. But this is more than break time for these children. The games provided the peoples with a glimpse of hope as the heat waves continue to wreak havoc on their land. The school has not been spared the effects of the drought. Lunchtime approached and there was no activity in the kitchen. No cooking was taking place. We don't have water to cook the food for the children. Do you have food? We have the food, yes. The last time, uh, last times, food, we had a deficit of it, but uh, 
of which we could uh, be able to cook for the learners, but it's because of uh, lack of water. So if you can get water, you can cook? Yes, I can cook for them. It was time to go search for the precious commodity. The first stop, the school's water pan. No hope here. The pan was now completely dry. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And the peoples resorted to this. All in the hope of getting some water below the surface. They failed. Yeah, this is... You see? I also tried my luck. Let me just pull up my shirt. Let's see how far I can go. The results were the same. As I search for water, there is also an indication that uh, these uh, goats here are very, very uh, thirsty. They are in search of water. But here there is a rationing program. I hear they were taken to the water pan yesterday, so they have to wait until tomorrow. Our efforts have been fruitless, so we have to move to a water pan that we hear is close, approximately seven kilometers from here, uh, so that we can get water for uh, the peoples of uh, Chemayes Primary School. And besides that, I have another problem here. I have to wash my hands after trying to to scoop uh, the mud. Keeping their livestock alive is fundamental to the survival of the Pokot people. Without intervention, the reality facing many pastoralists of Tirioko in Tiati is grim. Something must be done or else you will come and report dead people after those animals. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a very serious situation now. Mm -hmm. Because if you, the other side of Kabau, mm -hmm. some dangas have died because of hunger. And that has never happened. Mm -hmm. A dangas can die because of hunger. We head for a water pan in Kapunyani in Tiroko Ward. Although life here has always been difficult. For decades, the people of Tianti somehow managed, but not anymore. The first person we met at the water pan is this young boy. He's quenching his thirst, the safety of the water notwithstanding. He was not alone. Tukiona ndani tu usione kama iko maji ni matope. Na hii maji inakunywa na umbwa. Hata tukipea umbwa ambaye imekula mbuzi sumu, hiyo umbwa itakuja ikunywe hii maji na itapikie ndani. Chui wako wanakuja wanakunywa maji, mbwa yeye atakuja Kila kitu itakuwa inakunya imaji. So imaji si salama, unaamini tu kwamba kama, kama itakuwa ni sawa. Kama itakuwa ni mungu anajua. As the heat scorches the Pokot lands, suffering is now the order of the day. These grannies have been forced out of their homes. They have pitched camp at the water pan to prepare wild fruits for their families. Uh-huh. 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 U
The survival of the pastoralist of Tirioko is dependent on how long this water pan will last. And they are now practicing water rationing. Ni kwa miniana, kwa mba yangu wa kikunywa leo, kesha wata kunywa. So, hakuna mtu atakaye kunywa maji hapa na kesha hakuja hakunye. 30 kilometers from Kulal is Kerio River, the border between the Pokot and Marakwet communities. The recent conflict between the communities has rendered the river a no-go zone. Tension is high after over 40 people were killed in the inter-community clashes. The conflict has hampered business at Koloa Market and Tirioko chief tells me the tension has worsened the drought effects in his location. Kwa kawaida yetu, tunausa wanyama kwa marakwe. Na marakwe tu wanatuletia mahindi, mboga, kabich, na vitu vingine kama maharagwe, na mogo, na ndizi, na mahembe. Sasa kama tungekuwa na amani, Atu, kwa upande wa, wa wanadamu atungi hangaika sana. Oh. By the time we get back to school after fetching water, it was just after 4 p.m. and adjustments had to be made. Teachers prepared black tea for the pupils. Drought has ensured that even milk has become a rare commodity. Kuna baadhi ya wazazi ambao wame move, wame songa kwa CSLE kwa sababu ya ukame. And uh, so, until today, I have uh, uh, 94 people who have not reported. Herdsmen working for kilometers with their weak animals in the intense heat is a common feature in the now bare Tirioko ward. But in the same ward, at Koloa, a scent of freshness greets us. We meet 27-year-old Caroline Jabiwat inspecting her crop. The sukuma wiki is ready for harvesting. Tumekula sukuma ya kwanza, na hiyo imeisha, na hii sasa ndiyo ya bili. Kwa hii mboka kweli menisaidia. Kama kwa hii kichichichangu, Kila jioni na yusa mboka ya miyamocha mzini. Na hiyo sasa miyamocha mzini, ndairudi niende ni nunue uh, unga, korokoro mocha, miyamocha. Hiyo wa mzini ni asukari. Sasa naona kama imenisaidia na sinunui mboka tena, na, na juna tu kwa shamba, na nakula. Jabi Ward, a marakwet, married here in Pokotland, has embraced irrigation. Nilianza na kitu inaitwa silanga tukaichimba kwa group tulikuwa na mirikora on kila asubuhi saa 11 tunaenda kwa kila boma kwa watu 14 na tukaanza kuichimba kuna mwezi mbili iliyopita mvua ilinyesha kwa hiyo silanga ni kama water band kidogo ilikuwa na maji tunaanza kupanda tunamwakia maji na kwa saa hii bile maji imeisha tunaenda kwa public water band ni mbali tu lakini hata maji imeisha kule na ileta kwa kwa charkan 20 liters na imwakia ndio unaona iko namna hii jua ya huku inachaba kabisa iko gali ukiona vile inakaa nje hapo usimame na usimame hapa iko na tofauti ndio siku ana greenhouse uweso ya kununua hiyo greenhouse nikasema ili nichenge tu hii kadogo at least nichungie mboka sababu ukiona hii na uone ingine iko hapo mbele hiyo ingine nyaina shade imekauka eh 
Hazo. On her one acre farm, she has also planted sweet potatoes and tomatoes. Kwa upande wa mifuko niko na kuku, niko na mbuzi ya kienyeji, niko na ngombe, mbili tatu, wengine wameanza ku imekauka wengine wamelala jina wa muki. Lakini kwa sasa sababu kuna mboga kidogo na ichuna na katia mboga na katia kuku. Kuna zingine nikiona imekauka sana na itoa na patia ngombe. She prepared a meal of vegetables for us. Residents here feel this is the way to go. But before then, the area needs a stable supply of water. Kwa vyakula, tunapanda maindi. Lakini sana sana ikui, na kuja ikikaa katikati karibi inini, mvua inapote. You see, there's not very much that you can do about the rainfall. I want to tell you something about the rainfall here. Last year, there was 600 millimeters of rain. We measured the rain every day. Huh? More than half of that rain fell in April, May, and June. And since then, that's seven months ago, there's been very small rainfall, very light, very light. For example, uh, since the 1st of December up to this day, which is six weeks, I think there's less than 30 millimetres of rain. But now, when you look at 600 millimetres of rain, it's good rainfall. But most of it is washed away. Huh? So more small dams would be a big assistance. Huh? Small but deep dams. The, the evaporation rate in East Pocot is more than two metres. Huh? More than two metres. That's more than the, 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 the rainfall. In my country of Ireland, the richest people are those who keep cattle. Huh? And look at the demand for meat in this country. And if there were better markets, better prices for their, for their livestock, I think things would be an awful lot better. Also, what should the government do? Obviously, we try to keep our roads open. You look at that road, you came down that road today. Huh? It, 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 it's almost impassable. It's very hard on, 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 on trucks. So accessibility is a huge problem. Mm. Accessibility. Back to the Harsh Kulal Valley, we discover that the region's resources remain hugely underutilized. <laughs> The valley has springs of fresh water. Mm. This source of water, we are told, has never dried up since it was discovered. Pain, rather than joy, is what it has constantly dished out. Pokot and Trukana communities clash over this resource from time to time. We have entered two small offices, even the national government, the county government, but they are not taking the initiative because if they could be taking what we are telling them, the problem would be reduced. I have not gone to the spring that you, have, you are referring to me to, but um, I could send my, our engineers to go and explore the possibility mm -hmm. of uh, protecting those springs. Yes. And after protecting it, we can develop a small dam mm -hmm. that we can use to pump uh, upstream and distribute to the people. We intend to harness that water, block and luckily save it for drinking and for irrigation purposes. It's in our plan. For the Sean, who runs a water project in Tirioko, says water harvesting is key to solving the region's problems. At, at certain times, uh, food relief is necessary, but uh, it's, not a non, it's not a permanent solution. Imagine now we have to get, we slice 8 billion shillings out of uh, the national government bu budget to address the issue of feeding people, mm -hmm. feeding animals, and providing water. Mm -hmm. If these uh, sustainable programs were done, mm -hmm. then that 8 billion shillings would go to other needs. Debate on what constitutes sustainable interventions continue. But in the meantime, hunger stalks the people of Tiati, and death awaits their wealth as the drought bites on.
Enoxicolia, NTV, Tiati, Baringo County.